Here we go again. Rich ex-footballers and other assorted freeloaders, armchair fans and blatant hypocrites all expressing their utter horror at Manchester City failing to sell out their FA Cup semi-final allocation. Worst of those unsavory categories are people who do not pay through the nose for tickets, who get expenses to cover travel costs and get paid for attending, lecturing hard-hit football supporters about loyalty and priority. Of course TalkSport Radio have had someone picking at this scab. This time it fell to former England striker Kevin Phillips said to earn £33,000 a week when he was at Sunderland to embarrass himself. He was aghast that City appeared to have sold around 30,000 of their 35,000 allocation for Saturday's clash with Brighton. Is it the question that they've got their eye on bigger things? What's bigger than an FA Cup semi-final?" said Phillips, posing one of the daftest questions in football history. The fact that the game comes three days before the Blues square up to Tottenham in a Champions League quarter-final and just a month after their last wallop-busting trip to the rip-off capital of world football and with another final with insight might be a clue, even to the utterly clueless. With good tickets at Wembley costing as much as £80 for adults and £70 for kids, the cost of a football day out in the capital is exorbitant once you throw in travel, food and drink and all the other costs. To add to that, the FA then blithely moved kickoff time to Saturday tea time to suit television needs, meaning that fans face a scramble to catch the last trains back to Manchester, especially if the game goes to extra time and penalties. Would City favourites to reach another domestic cup final when the prices will crank up another notch, no doubt, and possibly heading for a European final in Madrid in a couple of months, who can blame fans for cutting their claw? and being selective about games. Naturally social media is full of fans of other clubs, many of whom rarely get a sniff of Wembley, horrified at City fans' attitude. Experience tells us that those fans who mock and sneer when City fans pick and choose their games due to economic necessity are usually the first to be outraged when asked to pay stupid prices to watch 90 minutes of football. Some fans do get it, one Spurs fan on Twitter said today, seriously though they do play so many games, I could never afford it. Can't even afford five games a season let alone 50-odd games. Fair play to those working-class people that go to them all. For some City fans, this will be their fourth visit to the stadium this season, with a fifth possible in the days when Wembley was a mecca for football fans, most supporters would be lucky to go there four times in their lives. If City beat the Seagulls on Saturday, it will ensure their 17th trip to Wembley in the last nine seasons. Now wonder that the small group of fans who began a chant of Wembley on Wednesday night were met with silent apathy from the rest of the stadium. The real villains here are the FA who have demystified Wembley, while still charging prices which suggest a trip to the National Stadium is still a rare and treasured moment.
but the need to pay the huge cost of rebuilding the stadium has meant that semi-finals also have to be played there when they used to be played at neutral grounds, preferably halfway between the opposing clubs. A trip to Wembley, especially for a semi-final, is no longer rare and special and yet is painfully expensive. To use it as a measure of city fans' fealty is downright dishonest. <laughs>